All right, we're gonna chat a little bit about the the main classes and ashes. Okay. And I'm gonna try to read through. We're just gonna talk. We're not gonna talk about combinations. I want you to think about roles, right? What does it mean to you to be a specific role? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go through, read this, the archetype, and after each archetype, we'll have just some brief conversation and I wanna gather from chat, much like we did in other videos. You can contribute here as we do this live. The Bard, truly a force multiplier. Keep these in mind. The Bard weaves songs of glory and conquest, inspiring his comrades to ever greater heights. The Bard knows secret and powerful words, is able to speak into being terrible nightmares. The Bards are a support role that makes a party better as a whole. Now, Bards are intended to amplify a party or raid's ability to perform within their own class. That amplification isn't just intended for DPS, but also for support, for healing, for taking damage, and for movement. All right, bards have often been portrayed as a musical class, and while they can be that, many bard applications may exist in just storytelling. Telling a story is going to be the thematic component of how the bard interacts with the party, and that story is going to enhance players' abilities to perform. Very similar in a way to buffing up a party, but you're not going to see him as a buff bot that you, will, that you might have experienced in previous games where they are only good for their buffs and then you kick them out or the party and then they sit in the corner and come back 30 minutes later to give you those buffs again, right? So that's the bard, right? So hearing that, or even conceptually as you reference maybe playing a bard previously, for you, how do you conceptualize a bard? What role does it play? Now they kind of outline that a bit. So I'm gonna read from chat. What are some of your thoughts? How do I see this class in its role in the game, right? I see it moving to the front to give the tank and melee DPS a buff, then move back and do the same for ranged and heals. Now we've had some talk about the bard here recently on the channel. And some of our discussion points were, at least from my perspective, what would make this class meaningful in my eyes is, you know, the idea of potentially having to buff people around you. So then situational play, situational awareness would actually play a factor here. Having to be up around the people in your party within proximity, actually having to pay attention to your environment along with all of the potential damage there. And then thinking, where do I place myself so I could buff everybody? And then how cool would it be to be able to, you know, attack something and then based on your attacks, like, you know, potentially amplifying those words of glory, if you will, or those songs. Captain Chaos, I believe they have said the bard is going to have a significant attack ability to continue to make it relevant, right? GFG, it would be interesting if they would only buff people, but only if they were really close to their ally. And Rat says mid-range, a little away from the enemy. Nick says would be cool if bards were like Lucio from Overwatch. Lots of movement and some slight DPS. I actually like that reference point. I, I totally see what you're talking about with that. That actually is a pretty cool idea. We know what's really interesting about that character in Overwatch too, is they have two different modes they can flip from. And so their, their abilities act differently based on, right? Isn't it speed and and healing effectiveness, if I'm not mistaken. It's like green and yellow, I believe. But that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, we haven't even, I haven't really even thought about that. You know, we just think about a bard and we think about, you know, maybe proximity. We think about amplification via buffs. What if your weapon is, isn't a range weapon? I don't know. There hasn't even been a whole lot of a, a talk around here in regard to that element with the bard. Now, here's what's interesting, right? If you're enjoying this conversation, if this is your jam, then Ashes HQ is for you because this is where we're going to cultivate conversations like this. It's where we're going to cultivate theory crafted builds and ideas around characters and, and their roles in the game, especially when you think of theory crafting elements, like all the possibilities, right? Now we're going to get, I want to get some more feedback about the next class. Okay. So we'll look at the cleric now, right? Now we could look at this skill sheet over here, but we're not going to dig into the the class abilities too much we'll just kind of put that up there and you can take a look at it this is one of the classes that we do have skills for in such a dangerous world 
A cleric is never wanting for friends. They can protect their allies in a number of ways and when necessary, snuff the life out of others. Masters over the very essence of life. They can sense the broken and corrupted. Right? So you got to think about what the cleric is, right? They they hold dominion over life and death. Think of any time you have played a cleric or if you know anything about a cleric in that class archetype, right? Even from other games, what is it? Now I could tell you from the the Alpha Zero tests and stuff, like they definitely could put some heals out and they definitely could do some damage as well. So when you think about a cleric, knowing that they're dominions over life and death, referencing clerics in any games you've played, how do you conceptualize the cleric? Now a lot of people are gonna say, obviously as a healer, and we're not thinking augmentation, we're thinking base archetype. Flem says, I see him as a tank with more team utility, All right? Because a lot of people think about a cleric and they think about a cleric having, you know, being armored, a battle healer almost. Yeah, we're not even just, just talking MMORPGs. Think about what a cleric is, the identity, right? Because I mean, you gotta think like, when you think about some of these, these class designs, not only are we referencing MMORPGs that we've played, we're also referencing just games in general, like going back to things like D&D, &D, Toxic Cave, Clerics, Greater, and few of them good only for healing the rest. Strong, full set buffs, soft healing, best for farming partners, class, absolutely AFK player's dream. Uh, Danny, Banish is gonna be dope in PvP. Yeah. And Flem says, if I ever played healer, I try to make him less squishy. Now Silence says, as a damage dealer, stopping life gain and overtime effects seems to tie in with the lure. You know, King says, usually religious figure. Ooh, Cheryl, I like that. Calling down the benefits of the gods, maybe? Ah, Danny, cleric, a leader of a clergy. So they're not just your average religious dudes. They're serious biz. You know, you got to think about it. <clears throat> I mean, everything about this class to me, I mean, it screams divinity. Like, so to me, I, I see them being tied into their gods significantly. Now, to what degree in the game we're going to see that play out or if it even plays a, a factor in the flavor of a, of a cleric, who knows, man. Next class, we're going to talk about the fighter. Briefly, briefly talk about the fighter. We don't know a whole lot. Some people are hypothesizing that we might see this as the fifth class in Alpha 1. But what's a fighter? The fighter is an expert in physical combat, a master of many weapons. This warrior strikes fear into the heart of their foes. We don't have a lot except Sorty Mick point stab. We, we got that. So what's a fighter? Master of arms is what I'm hearing, right? Expert in physical combat. And that is the way in which they strike fear. So think about that. Fighter is a master of war. I like that. Now we, we've got this one skill that's been talked about. We know that the fighter archetype includes maneuverability, closing the gap. Now, Steven has referenced that if you're a fighter, for example, and you have this rush ability, a charge of sorts, he talked about how we would see augmentation work, right? We'll talk about augmentation another time and have a whole discussions around that. But they're an interceptor in your face, focused. What's my hypothesis? They're gonna hit you really hard, physical damage, and they are gonna know how to use the weapons they wield. I think no matter what weapon type they use, they're gonna have not necessarily a special ability, but there's gonna be some sort of a perk to them using a physical damage weapon. So we got Gray Jedi the Balance saying, fighters are bruisers, I feel. Isk says, I like the idea they are allowing fighters to not only use melee, but also ranged weaponry, right? Danny says, they rely on tactics and all the arms needed to implement said tactics, right? And Captain Cass says, I feel like the fighter is the in-your-face version of a rogue. They seem both lethal, but separate approaches. Nick says, I feel like fighters are going to be the high mobility, mid-tier armor, kind of scrappy. For some reason, I'm thinking pirate type combat style. Interesting. Troll says two-handed sword that wrecks back line range support characters with gap closing and movement impairing. You know, Gray Jedi says if uh, a tank has charge, maybe fighter has a leap. Well, fighter has rush, which is that ability right there. They rush towards the target and upon reaching the target, deal an amount of damage 
the chance to knock the target down. Now, that's the only skill we've got. We'll tie in the skills with the classes down the road, right? That's not even relevant outside of they have a rush or a charge ability. We know this, right? Nyx is also, I'm picturing the fighter as being something like the Red Viper from Game of Thrones. Oh, nice, nice. I like that reference point. Fighter should be the most diverse between the tank and DPS types, says Danny. Yeah, I think Interceptor, high physical melee damage, potentially burst. I also kind of wonder if, if we'll see them being the ones that have, you know, potentially bleeds like you would see. You know, like the, the traditional warrior style roles. Uh, crit chance is often applied in a lot of situations and circumstances where what? Where you catch somebody off guard or by surprise. You think about backstab, for example, right? Don't know a lot about the fighter, but yeah, I think overall we're all thinking get in, hit them hard, hit them fast, cut them down, right? That's our fighter, right? So talking about the mage in a world of high magic, no party would be complete without a mage. Masters of the arcane, they bring terrible elements to bear and devastating spells. If reality needs changing in some fashion, ask a mage to help, right? Devastating elemental arcane forces in reality. We already have seen a lot of updates, visual updates. We know about the blink ability. Again, we tie this into the, the fighter one, something Steven shared, but let's think about it, right? Masters of the arcane, right? I'm already thinking fire damage, ice or frost damage, arcane abilities with reality, like teleportation. Now there were some abilities that we saw, like lightning. So there's a lot of possibilities. I'm gonna ask what to many here probably is a rhetorical question, but how do you see a mage's role? Danny says, big AOE damage. Kiter of melee warriors, DJ Fleming. Imagine the fighter mage fights, one porting away, one intercepting. Troll says CC and AOE. Latarius, glass cannon bursters. Danny Montani, their damage and control. Uh, Nick says, I see mages as tons of damage or maybe some sort of terrain support. Walls to block off mobs, encircling enemies, etc. Yeah, like control, master of the elements, mobility, utility, right? I think of a mage, I think of masters of arcane forces. We know they already have a blink ability. And we know you can rank it up. So they got some mobility and cooldowns, right? I also I also think cooldown management being important. Arcane vending machines, light streak, conjure up some food, Mr. Mage. They're really just bakers these days. Nokia Rokia, enhancer, magic to support fighters, hopefully. Right? So that's our mage. And these are our thoughts, right? We got we got some variations here. Got some different ideas around this here in chat. Let's check out, let's check out another class now. Death from afar is the Rangers, a master of the bow and range combat. The Ranger is more than happy to let others get their hands dirty. No one else has such a keen eye in natural environments. <laughs> Toxic cape. Early shit, mid shit, late game in mass PvP shit on everyone. Huge mobility, medium damage, huge crit, stun kills, few teleports. Late game, annoying rats. That's why I think of a Ranger. So Captain Chaos is rangers usually glass cannons. They know their environment and how to position for maximum safety and damage potential. Toxic says I, I would I would say rangers are weak solo but strong in a pack. Yeah, light streak. Rangers make me think of mobility, jumping out of combat while the fighter dashes in. Great single target and utility, but little AoE. Well, you know, if we remember some of the abilities we looked at the other day when we were we were doing our stream here. You all remember we we were showcasing some of the old video footage, comparing it to some of the new video footage. You could visually see them doing like a roll back away from their target, putting a trap down, right? Well, not a, the trap's a different ability. It was a shot that they would do when they would fall, they would roll backwards, right? I think Ranger, I think tracking, knowing their environment, blending in really well. Yeah, but this is a getting into good points of conversation though, because... You have some people saying, oh, I can see this happening and then another class doing this. You're starting to think of combinations of how these classes would synergize with each other too, which is also important. Yeah, I think, I think, I think so too, Silent. You know, the traps making rangers very strategic in PvP. The rogue 
master of opportunity, using skill, positioning, and the environment to dish out frightening amounts of damage. In their downtime, they provide solid utility, helping their friends navigate dangerous, otherwise unseen. We, we all know what a rogue is going to get for skills. We have a lot of... Uh, we have like four of the archetypes and we got their base skills, right? But a rogue? What do we all know about rogue? They stealthy. You can't see them coming. Do all rogues have that in games? Of course not. There is a reason you don't see them coming. So what are our thoughts around this archetype? Y'all making me want to play a rogue again. Stop trying to make me go dark side, okay? Lexer's here. Probably part of the reason. DJ Flem, man. Assassin. Tarlac, man. I've, I'm feeling you on that. Some Poison, overtime, DPS for AoE. Some of them dots. Skill positioning. Rogues get the ladies, don't they? I don't know, King, do they? Danny says, so long as the stealth is good, rogue will be good. Quick in and out. Insta-kill potential squishy, Lataria says. Ronin rogues are antisocial lurkers who don't like peekaboo jokes. <laughs> Them's fighting words. Lexer says... I do have that aura that corrupts. And he's, I knew it. I was telling he's here. Oof, light streak. I like it. Stealth utility, huge burst, high skill cap. Nothing feels better than stunning someone from stealth and detonating them before they even know what hit them. Nokia Rokia, part two here. Obviously, rogues get the ladies. Only class sides, warriors with class. Let's be honest, no lady wants a man in a robe. Latarius, high skill cap. Guess I can't play it then, Kappa. Huh? Oh. I feel like this next class is going to cause some people a little bit much here. All right. Next one, Summoner. I know some people here like Summoner. What's a Summoner? Well, they're never alone. They have two hands, but a, but a Summoner has more. Why? Because they've got others. They summon those others, man. Right? With the right tool for every job. No situation they can't handle because they just summon it up. But what do they summon? This is another one of the classes we just don't have a whole lot with. We know that they can... Summon tank DPS support summons, right? We talked about how they could be very influential in sieging, but we don't have the class kit. We don't have that toolkit. We don't have those abilities yet listed out like we do other classes, but you can theorize. So how do you see a summoner? Look at this. Animals, different types of summons, spirits, zombies, skeletons, and other undead creatures, corpses, potentially. What? Which way you, you go with your summoner, right? King, they summon friends to play with them. But I don't know if they'll be able to use the same words we do. Maybe it'll be summoner speak. Silent says siege warfare. Danny Montani says the best solo level in class. Right, no Kiroki. I imagine they're going to be capable of the best solo stuff due to the fact that they can switch which summon they use. Fair on. Summoning isn't a class. It's the friends we made along the way. DJ, jack of all trades. Summoners will have the best tools for each encounter, no matter the situation, he screw it says. King says, I could summon some fried chicken right about now. Oh, man. Bad summoner. Bad summoner. But you think about it. We know we know some of the potential class combinations that we're going to end up getting. Summoners are going to they're going to be strong, right? They're not alone. They're not all by themselves. You know what I mean? Last but certainly not least. Tanks to control a fight to help the party mitigate incoming damage and to dictate who is getting hit. You can have an evasion tank, control tank, shield tanks. They can take an unconscionable amount of punishment and woe to those who ignore their commands. Most important part, mitigate incoming damage, dictate who will be getting hit. And we know that they can be evasion control or shield tanks, right? A lot of progression paths. And of course, we all know the tank is the base for a paladin. For some of that light's justice. Perfect defense. DJ Flemmy Flem. The beacon on the battlefield. Beautiful. You think about what kind of tanks that this, I mean, you can think of all the MMOs or games you've played where something, you know, some class, some archetype fitting this tank. Now, a lot of us think tank, we think roll, right? This is the thing that a lot of people have difficulty with with this. You know, I even am like, uh, how does saying tank make sense in the lore, I guess is the real question, but moving on, it gets me to a paladin. So, but I mean, you look at every, every tank and they're, they're all, look at this guy, he's decked out, decked out in a bunch of heavy armor, thick plate armor. That's thick, not T-H-I-C-C -C, like some of y'all are probably thinking. They're my buddy weird there. 
probably an orc tank, but I digress. Tanks are the only true unicorn in all MMOs. Toxic Cape, important class for raids and PvP healers. Very important to have for them in team. Probably going to have one or two buffs for all team. Some abilities that would make them untouchable. Shield that holds 100% damage, nonstop stuns, marathon. So, you know, you think about that, though. You think about they're the master of the mechanics in a lot of ways when it comes to fights. Like it said, who's getting hit? They don't just dictate who's getting hit. They dictate the enemy's attention in a lot of ways. The momentum, as I consider, of the fight. Right now, we've seen a lot of the abilities for the tank. Like, they've got the appeal. They pull people towards them. That get over here like your scorpion in Mortal Kombat. So, Lightstreak says... It's interesting that they're sticking to the Trinity. They're making tank a single class rather than something uh, that multiple classes can do, unless I'm understanding this wrong. We don't know what some of the other classes abilities are yet, but I mean, if you want to be a tanking game, you want that actual role in the game. Like, I just don't see how you're not going to go tank first. Yeah, they're vital to a raid. They've got base utility that you're going to need. Now, obviously later the augmentation and picking them as a secondary class, that's it's a second secondary thing, right? That's a whole different conversation for another time. We'll theorize a lot around this. We've got four archetypes right now that we've got skills to look at, that we can dissect, that we can tinker with. We can even cross those with their own as some of the class combinations. We're going to look at those class combinations very soon, this week soon. Well, that's our that's our discussion piece for today, friends. 